Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Wednesday, a uh, little bit of a different video I got for you today. It's uh, basically no restorations or anything, but uh, I have to go through some measurements. I had a couple people asking me about fits and drills and sizes and uh, throughout a while, so I figured let me just get this one video out. So this whole video is basically going to be like a a small class, you know, on fits and, and drill sizes, things like that. I hope... Uh, I hope some of you get something out of it, and for the rest of you that are looking for sheer entertainment, uh, maybe you'll find something in here. But uh, anyway, uh, let's get right to it. Okay, so I hope you'll bear with me on this because this is a subject that uh, you know a lot of people can chime in on. But uh, I'm kind of a self-taught uh, wannabe machinist, so my teacher was pretty much an idiot. <laughs> So let me tell you uh, what I've learned through the years, through trial and error, and uh, I hope this will help you out. Okay, uh, when we're talking about fits, okay, uh, there are many different types of fits, dozens, okay? But the three basic fits that we talk about, especially in the machinist world or anything, is uh, the clearance fit. And a clearance fit is when the hole is quite a bit larger than the shaft that you're trying to put in. So it fits right in like that. That would be a clearance fit. Then we have what's called an interference fit or, in other words, a press fit. Now, a press fit is where the hole is just slightly smaller than the shaft, so much so that you have to press it in with either a press, or tap it in with a hammer or something like that. Depending on how tight the press fit is, that's another type of fit, but they all fall into that category of interference fit or press fit. Now, between the interference and press fit and the loose clearance fit, we have what's called a transitional fit. And a transitional fit is just that. It's in between clearance and, and interference. So that could be where it's, you know, you just have to just kind of, you just kind of use a little bit of four, or it could be something like this, where it, you know, it fits in like that, but it's not super loose. And that's why I'm telling you it could be confusing, but we're talking about now sizes. That's why we want to talk about fits. And you'll understand it in a minute when I talk about sizes. Now, uh, in the U.S. here, this is one of our most common fasteners is a quarter inch fastener, okay? That is this size here, uh, and it's, it's used many times. A quarter inch is 250 thousandths of an inch. Now, anytime you, when you drill a quarter inch hole, uh, a drill doesn't, first of all, a drill doesn't make a round hole. A drill makes kind of this goofy trying, if you looked at it, under a, uh, an optical comparator or something, and you, you really looked at the, uh, compared to a circle, it's nowhere near a circle, but it's close enough to the average eye where, you know, you say, okay, a drill looks like it makes a circle. It doesn't. Uh, if you want to make a circle, you have to use something called a reamer. And this is what a reamer is. You can see how different it is from a, a drill bit. Okay, see, here's a drill bit. And you can see that's just made because this is made to remove the chips from the hole. Whereas a reamer, you can't drill a hole with a reamer, but what you can do is enlarge a hole. So you drill a hole slightly smaller than the size that you really want, and you finish it off with a reamer, and that'll make a perfectly round hole. And that's how you get a good fit. That's what reamers are for. Now, um, a quarter inch, this is a, a dowel pin, okay? Dowel pins are made in the machining world to temporarily put things together or to permanently put them together being pressed and depending on what size hole you drill and either you push it in or press it in now a dowel pin uh measures in at uh, this one here is quarter inch so it should measure about 250 thousandths you could see here 250 thousandths that dowel pin measures and that is one quarter inch now if i have a hole that's exactly let's say this hole was 250 thousandths this pin would not fit in that hole because you can't have two sizes occupying the same space. It just can't happen. So this hole is slightly oversized so that this will fit in there. Okay, so that's it, it has even a little wiggle to it. So this is much larger. If we were to measure this hole, even though it says quarter inch, it's much larger than quarter inch. When I say much larger in the machining world. Um, now, 
When you look at these bolts, these quarter-inch bolts that you buy from the hardware store, if I was to say to you, what size is this bolt? You'd say, well, that's quarter-inch. It's actually not. If you measure all quarter-inch bolts, look at the size. They're five thousandths on. That's five thousandths under. This one here is four thousandths under. This one, that one's stainless. This one here is four thousandths under. So you see, they're all, you say, wow, I, I thought quarter inch bolts were quarter inch. They're not. See, this one here is even, this is threaded rod, and you can see this is uh, five and a half thousandths under. So you say, I thought they were quarter inch. See, that's the fallacy. Just like a quarter inch drill bit. A quarter inch drill bit does not drill uh, a quarter inch hole it might drill a little bit it's meant to drill a hole that this and that this is why these kind of are undersized so when you buy a quarter inch drill and drill a hole that these will fit in if you had exact machining tolerances and drilled an exact quarter inch hole and this was exactly quarter inch you'd have to bang it in you wouldn't be able to uh to just slip it now in. here's another thing i want to tell you that uh when you buy a, a drill bit you know or try and measure a drill bit a lot of people will turn it around which you know we do and we measure the shaft okay because you figure that this was cut out of a, a shaft of a piece of metal and it's going to be the same size all the way up so when i measure this quarter inch drill bit look what i get 240 i'm three thousand short that's because this drill bit is intentionally made thinner because the top here is where you have to measure to get the exact or you have to measure across here like this and you can see it, it comes up at 250 thousands across here you do not you wouldn't want a full size 250 thousand shaft because if you did this whole side would rub al along the hole and almost weld itself into the hole so the shaft has to be a little bit thinner than the actual cutting edges okay so that's pretty interesting now so that means that anytime you pick out a drill it's going to be slightly smaller than the cutting edge and forget about what the drill says it's the hole it makes okay so uh never measure the shaft assuming that that's the hole size it's going to make it's the same thing with a reamer now here i have a reamer this is a quarter inch reamer if i measure the shaft of this reamer you can see here, I'm very sure. You say, wow, 200, that's, that's not even close. However, if I turn it around here, and I'm going to rotate it gently, watch what happens to the numbers as they, uh, they climb up, as I'm rotating it, okay? I'm getting just to the tip here, and I'm, there I am at 250 thousandths by rotating it. So this, this will give me an a exact 250 thousand hole. So never go by the shaft. That's another thing to, uh, to so remember. So what do you say we have some fun? We'll drill uh, some hole. Now you've got to, if you want to drill a, uh, uh, if you want to make a exact quarter inch hole, you have to drill it a little bit smaller and then take the last few thousands off with a reamer. You can't, uh, you know, try and drill it with a, a quarter inch hole and then ream it. So you just go a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to drill some perfect quarter inch holes and then I'll show you how these things fit. Now I'm going to film this reaming operation in real time so you could see what we're doing here. First of all, it's very important that uh, you always lubricate the reamer because it needs a lot of lubrication. Uh, secondly, you have to slow the speed down. You don't want to go real fast because it will create a lot of heat and then the heat will maybe change the diameter of the reamer. So just go nice and slow, a lot of lubrication. And you can see, just take the chips out by going back and forth, and it's an easy operation. Okay, so here's our experiment. You can see these four holes, to the naked eye, look identical, as far as uh, the drill hole. Now, this, these two first uh, holes I drilled with this drill bit here. This is a high-quality drill bit. It is a quarter-inch drill bit. You can see here. Uh, let me get the there you go you can see it's this quarter inch it's a uh, it is a high quality drill bit properly ground and i drilled this one here with the, the just the drill bit and then i drilled this one with the drill bit and reamed it out okay so here is the uh the dowel pin okay we'll put it in here you can see that it, it just just has some fit because we use that drill you see here just has some fit now those holes are slightly bigger than quarter inch just slightly ever so bit now this one here i drilled with a 
a drill bit the second drill bit here, which is 247 thousandths, it's uh, 3,000 shy of, uh, and then I reamed it out. Now this is a proper, this is just the drill and this is the drill with the ream. Now look, it won't fit with just the drill because like I said, it was like 3,000 short or something. See how it won't even go in? Now I reamed this hole to exactly 250 thousandths. Now look what happens. There's my dowel pin, it won't fit because you can't have the same exact hole and the same exact dowel pin. Again here, this is a, uh, a pin from a pin gauge. This is highly accurate. It will not fit. And you can see here, can you see the size? 250,000. So we'll go to the pin gauge here and we'll see what size will fit into that hole. Let's try 249. This is a thousandths less. And look at that. It fits in beautifully. This would be considered a transitional fit okay? or even a, 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 a tight clearance fit more or less. But you see how that fits? That's only one thousandth of a difference between this and the 250. But you see how that can make such a difference that it won't even fit. Now, I could warm this up and this might go in. Let's try that. Okay, we warmed that up now with the torch, and here's that pin. Watch this. Look at that. I got it to go in. Now, as this cools down, now you got to work very quickly. As this cools down, it is now a press fit. Now, the only way for me to get this out is to heat it up again because that is really in there, and I don't want to put any wrench on there, but isn't that cool? Okay, now it's cooled down again. You can see I can feel it. It's down to room temperature again, and once again, this pin will not fit it fits in these two because it was drilled with a oversized drill but it will not fit in here okay i drilled this hole out now this is going to be a this top hole here will be a clearance fit and you can see how nicely that passes through no problem that would be considered a clearance fit here uh this one here would be considered an uh an in a uh transitional fit okay because it's uh it, you don't have to press it in but it's very tight It'll hold itself in there. That's considered transitional fit. And the last hole here, that's the that would be considered a press fit. Okay. Or now you would either have to heat this up or we could use the dake. The dake. Okay, everybody's favorite, the dake. Let me show you the setup here. We, we put the step cone on. Got a steel plate down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to press this in. Let me show okay, you. Okay, this is considered a light press fit because uh, the tolerance is very close. Now, now what you want to do whenever you're going to do a press fit is it's a good idea to put a small chamfer with a hand countersink. You can see here we did it there on the hole. And it's also a good idea to chamfer the pin itself. Okay, so we did both of that. Oh, now we're putting it here like this. Okay, you can see, and we're just going to get it kind of centered under the middle there and then press it in. And this will be a very easy press. You could do this with a hammer, but uh, it's always nice to do it with the dake. Now, when you start pressing, once it starts to go, it's always a good idea, release it, okay, and recenter it, okay, just because you want to make sure you're not going to crook it. There we go. See how nice and easy this is pressing in? There we go. Until when it hits the steel plate in the bottom, you'll stop. You can see here, we're flush over here. This is solid. It's what's called a mechanical bond. Now, the only way to get this out is to punch it out. But isn't that beautiful? And that's something to add to your collection of how to now do To simply remove a press fit, it's always a good idea to take a, a flat pin punch that's very close to the diameter uh, you don't want it too small because it, you can mushroom the end of that pin out. But you want to get this here. We have a, a good size pin punch here. And we have a ball peen hammer. And we're just going to tap this out. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Now, one of the best tools I ever bought in my life, I would say probably one of the top 10 purchases, I've used this thousands of times, is this General, you can see General made this beautiful handle, and it's a hand countersink. You could easily make one yourself. Uh, this one here is a five flute countersink. 
but you see how this works if you when you drill a hole anytime you just push this in here with your hand and you could ream out the hole just to give you a uh, a nice chamfer and you see how that works you get rid of all the burrs you know how we don't like burrs here just a beautiful tool i've uh like i said thousands it's the best one of the best tools i ever bought general well worth the money it was expensive when i bought it <clears throat> but you know, not crazy expensive, but I'll try and find a link for it. Fantastic tool. Okay, so in closing, I hope this uh, clears this up for some of you because I know I, it was very confusing to me in the beginning. It was not simple, but now it is simple when I understand it. But, you know, when you not explain this and you go in and you, especially if you go to a machinist, machinist supply company and you buy a quarter inch something and it's actually quarter inch and then you wonder why you're, you know, it's not fitting because it uh, took up the same spot. Anyway, uh, chime in in the comments. I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, interesting discussion if you've stayed this long. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.